Hi everybody, welcome to the Concept Crucible Podcast. Ryan has quit. No, he just went to the kitchen. Anyways, it's podcast time. Hello everybody, I'm Ryan. And I'm Jim. We've just reversed the intro, normally you go first, but I guess it's my house, minor rules. Yeah. As you can tell, we've got a different setup. Unless you're listening to it, in which case you can't, but we have a different setup. Yeah, we got a different bookshelf behind us. Totally different, not yeah. a single Cthulhu. Yeah, well what happened was, is I, um... My girlfriend's out of town, and I have to watch the dog. And usually it takes us, <laughs> it usually takes us what five hours to, to do this. So instead of me being away for five hours, I would we just do it here, and then occasionally leave the dog in his crate while we also, film. Ryan's dog is super super adorable. Yeah, maybe maybe we'll film him later on today. Yeah. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Do a thing. So, but anyways, we're in a new location, my house, and uh, but still got an awesome podcast lined up for this one. So. Yeah, we want to talk about um, employment, specifically self-care when you're unemployed. Because we are both currently between jobs, finger yeah. quotes in the air. Well, I mean, arguably that's true. I just wrapped up a contract with the Faculty Association and just wrapped up a contract at uh, the college. Yeah, Conestoga yeah. College. So, so I'm technically underemployed and you're technically mm-hmm. unemployed. Well, I consider myself at liberty. I've got some freelance stuff. Yeah. But freelancing is a topic for a whole other day. Yeah. So, but since I'm working at the bar at nights, I really don't have a, a day kind of job. So I consider myself unemployed and, and then you and I were talking about the things we do when we're not making a living working for somebody else. Yep. And there were some interesting conversations that we were having out of that. So we figured we should turn it into, um, a podcast. Cause a lot of people, a lot of the feedback we got back from fulfillment, a lot, like people were enjoying mm-hmm. that and enjoying our thoughts on the things that we do to satisfy If you enjoyed ourselves. our podcast on fulfillment, or if you would like to, you can find the link over Ryan's face or in the show notes. I thought it's going to be here now, right across my belly. No, when in doubt, I still put links over your face just because uh, that's where it's fun. All right, all right. <laughs> but anyway, so since there was such a positive response from, from fulfillment, then uh, this seemed like a, a good one yeah. to follow it up with. I, uh, we, I did a video, I think last year, on unemployment. And the big sort of, there's just a five minute Vita thing, but the takeaway is that un, being unemployed is always a full time job. Mm-hmm. Um, and the mistake is, is that the people make is often not treating it like that. But, I mean, in, and not just in the sense that the assumption that goes along with that, I think, is also is, is, is that you need, it's a full time job to continually look for jobs. Mm-hmm. But there's a lot of other things that go along with that in terms of making sure you're a functioning human being and sort of consistently improving yourself and, Generally, just sort of taking care of yourself. Hmm. But before we get into that, two things. One, you can definitely tell I'm unemployed because I'm not in a suit and tie. Oh, I just thought I should. Down. I, sh- I just thought I should draw attention unless, to that. Unless you're listening, in which case, that's the sound of Ryan's t-shirt. Yeah. Also, I just realized we're both wearing Doctor Who shirts. I failed to see why that's from. No, it's not a problem. It's just I find it funny that the shirt I happen to choose. Mine's a doll like that says procrastinate. I find it funny that we're going to do a show on getting things done and you're wearing a shirt that says procrastinate. Yeah. So anyways, that was the first thing. Second thing, we should actually do a proper icebreaker. We should do a proper icebreaker. We right. skipped it. Um, but yeah, what is the best job that you ever had? I would say the best job I ever had uh, was split over two summers. The first summer was much better than the second one. Um, between... First and second year of university, and then second and third year of university, I, um, wait, was it first and second year? Or was it before? Yeah, I know, it was between first and second, and then between second and third year. Um, so the first half of undergrad, I worked at a conservation area as a park attendant. Nice. So uh, I would start my shift mid-afternoon, and during the daylight hours, I would take care of a lot of grounds maintenance things, so cutting grass and weed whacking, collecting garbages, emptying fire pits, uh, just anything that I could do outdoors um, while the daylight was out. Uh, And then at night, I would generally patrol for um, security. This is before I became a security guard, Mm -hmm. uh, but doing basic security stuff. So addressing camper problems, because it was a conservation area that also had uh, both seasonal campers and then weekend warrior campers. So all the seasonals, all the seasonals was up in the, the trailer area, 
And they were there, uh, if not every week, then every weekend throughout the entire summer. And then there was two other sections which had access for trailers, but it was a lot of just campers that came up for the weekend or maybe for a week. Uh, so I would patrol around, make sure people complied with the rules, um, enforce parking, those kinds of you're, things. You're the man, basically. You were the man yeah. for two summers. Yeah, I was the man. And, oh, and I, the man, right. I, I didn't do it just and myself. The there was there was uh, two, two other guys with me, uh, plus my boss. Uh, and it was just, it was a great experience. Uh, I worked with some great people. I uh, met one of them, uh, a good friend of mine who uh, we still keep in touch to this day. Um, there was a lot of like really interesting things. Like I, we stared down a guy who was like tweaking out with an axe. So that was an interesting experience. Um, a fight that happened. That was the first time that I was like privy to a fight. Now I didn't actually get involved with the fight, but I was like chasing down a guy in the dark um, trying to catch people illegally entering the conservation area, but just in general, being outdoors, um, just working in the, the bush because it was both like open fields with a pool and then it was down by the lake, but just, it was all over the place and it was just a fantastic job. I really enjoyed it and I have a lot of really fond memories from it. So I'd say that was the best job I ever had. Nice. I have worked at lots of different jobs. I have worked in convenience stores. I have been in an inventory counter. I have worked in construction and in call centers. Uh, I have worked at universities and in libraries and doing all kinds of things. And my best job <clears throat> was during my undergrad, I spent two years working at an A&W. And it was, I mean, I mean, it is weird to think that my, my favorite job is the, the, the crummy fast food job. Um, and it was, it was, it was, it was also a crummy fast food job, but I got to work with some really interesting people. Uh, I got to work with a lot of teenagers and nothing will teach you how unoriginal you are like working with teenagers. <laughs> You're like, wow, I did that exact same stuff. I was dumb. I mean, there's no talking to them, but wow, I was dumb. But no, I also got to, it, it was really well managed. I remember sitting down for my employment review and, and normally like places like that, that the point is to just like pay your, your employees just above minimum wage or, you know, as low as you can get it. Um, and they were just, they were just like, we were like, what you're doing? Here's a, here's a $2 an hour raise. Cause you're worth it. I'm like, wow. And it did a lot to secure my loyalty to the point where I am sitting here talking about it mm -hmm. as a, as a thing that happened. And, and, and as a thing that, that, at the time affected me a great deal because it said something about what they thought I was worth. Mm -hmm. I was worth more than the minimum. Um, it was really neat to work in a kitchen where it, I, I don't recommend it. There were lots of, there were lots of downsides to the job, like, you know, the perpetual smoker cough and stuff like that. Um, working in front of a, a 300, 400 degree grill mm -hmm. for, you know, eight, nine hours at a time. It, it is, it was not an easy job, but it was neat to work in a kitchen in a super fast paced atmosphere where everyone depends on everyone else. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can only, you can only make food when it, when the goal is to get an order out in 90 seconds, everyone has to be doing what they're doing at the, at the top of their ability. And, it, and when you, when you hit that groove, it's just like playing in a band. It feels really good. Mm -hmm. Even if you're just making burgers and then afterward, you're totally exhausted. Um, it's kind of funny that you comment on the, uh, how, good you feel and how loyal you, loyal you feel after getting a raise i've only ever received a performance based raise once usually when my um, wages went up it was because everybody's went up mm -hmm. not not the minimum wage going up but just um like at the uh, at the bar for example the, the very first raise i received from them is because everybody went up uh, a category uh just because the bar started to do really well so the owner decided to start paying the guards a little bit more um, and but then I have received a performance based raise mm -hmm. since then. And when when I got that performance one, I was just like, man, like they value me for what I'm doing, not because they pay me to keep me here. You mm -hmm. know what I mean, like it's I felt I don't know, maybe it was just psychology and that they, they were doing it so that I had those feelings so that I would continue yeah. to be loyal. I don't know. It's entirely possible. I'm not going to discount it. But it's I did have the feeling that. I, my skills, my experience, my decision-making was respected in such a way that they mm -hmm. want to compensate me, um, 
more fairly to what they think I'm worth. It may not necessarily reflect what I think I'm worth because, hell, I think I'm worth a lot. But <laughs> in the, the economy of, of, you know, employees and whatnot, that may not necessarily be the case. But still, I just remember, like, getting a strong sense of, uh, of accomplishment yeah. out, of, out of getting that. So I, I had that experience as well. Yeah. For me, it was, it was I, I'd come out of a lot of places where, I mean, you start at minimum wage and the, and the, and the struggle is to make it anywhere past there. Mm. And, and there's, there's a sort of systemic move from the top to, to make sure that you keep costs down by paying the employees as little as, as possible. And the result is that you wind up with sort of super low loyalty and, and, Mm-hmm. And that, and it, it was it was it was my first encounter with with a job that had that, that acknowledged that my loyalty uh, mattered. Mm-hmm. I mean, normally the the idea of it with a minimum wage employee is that they're essentially disposable. Mm-hmm. You know, you can you can replace them with anyone. Mm-hmm. And the fact of the matter is that, like in a kitchen, that's not true. I mean, it takes a certain amount of training. It takes a certain amount of, of speed and diligence and, and working with others and being able to sing pleasant songs on the grill um, <laughs> is helpful. Having a lengthy list of things I'm not allowed to talk about in the kitchen. Uh, they really, by the way, if you ever work in a kitchen, they really don't like it when you yell out five second rule. <laughs> Just, especially within your shadow customers. Yeah. Never, ever, ever utter the words five second rule. Uh, makes It unnerves a lot of people. <laughs> Have you ever watched the movie Waiting? No, 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 but I've heard good things. Yeah. I was that gonna... movie came out when I worked there. Yeah. And uh, we were not actively discouraged from wa- from watching it. Yeah. But our, our supervisors um, subtly discouraged us from talking about it during our shifts. Yeah. Oh, no, I was just curious if your experiences matched the kitchen experience there where it's a, well, I guess not just the kitchen, but the service industry in general. That it's a really crappy job. Um, it's where like you really have to grit through your teeth in terms of... Th- pleasing the customers and doing everything that you can to stay sane in your job rather than just quitting outright so i don't know i didn't find that but to be fair i had had a lot worse jobs Mm -hmm. um but also working in like like working in a restaurant restaurant is is different than working in fast food yeah there's a in in fast food the customer is the one who's just tired like they just want food yeah if you can give them food they're happy they're not looking for an experience they're looking for a burger and fries right and the faster that they get that, the more efficient it is, the less of a pain it is for them. Hmm. That is a good experience. Like, they're, they're, you get the odd customer who, who wants something more than that. But really, all they're looking for is a fast, efficient transaction so they can go home and watch TV hmm. and listen to their kids complain. <laughs> uh, but that is not what we're here to talk about. We, no. want, we want to talk about self-care and the importance of self-care. No. Especially, um, especially when... Especially when you're, when you're between jobs. Yeah. Um, I, this is a thing that I, I spend a lot of time thinking about, um, because when you take care of yourself, which means doing things like exercising and, and, um, you know, reflecting on things and making sure that you put on pants and leave your house once in a while and see humans who are supportive of you and your endeavors, um, it helps you be a better put together human because being an employee can be really demoralizing. Mm. Yeah, when we were preparing for the show, um, I brought up the comment that it's it, there's certain elements of when you're unemployed that remind me a lot of depression. Um, now, thankfully, I've only been through really short bouts of, of depression. I don't even know if you can call it depression, but I was certainly feeling blue for one or two weeks at a time um, before. But that idea of just this constant spiral that you can't get out of that just reinforces itself um you know with for depression Mm -hmm. negative thoughts and then just not having either the motivation or the drive to be able to do even the basic things like that i found i find something similar happens to me in unemployment where it's just i i feel defeated when i you know put out job applications and either you don't get a response back or when you get an interview you don't get the interview um, and then you just, it, I find it, it's really easy to fall into the procrastination or doing things that make you feel good, but aren't productive in the sense of like, I spent all of yesterday. Um, and to be fair, this is, we're filming this on a Monday. I dedicated my Sunday to kind of a nice, easy, relaxing day, but just spending the entire day binge watching something on Netflix Right. And it's really easy to do that because, I mean, it's instant gratification. It feels good. 
there's so many things to watch that it's it's almost like you have decision paralysis in terms of just what you want to devote your time to. Um, but then suddenly it is nine or 10 o'clock at night and you're like, well, I'm not getting anything done today. And so I'm just going to go ahead and stay up until two, three o'clock in the morning doing that. And then the only reason why I went to bed last night is more because I, I knew I had to be productive today and because the dog was still awake with me at three in the morning. So I'm like, I better put him to bed because this is bad for his health, <laughs> not for my health. This is bad for this thing that's dependent on me. So uh, yeah, yesterday I did something similar, uh, yeah. only I didn't go to bed. I got I, I, I was playing Minecraft until six in the morning. Yeah. Um, but I was like, oh, I should go to bed because we have to film some podcasts today. Mm-hmm. And uh, here we are, and we're actually doing it, which is amazing. But yeah, it's it's the same kind of of thing. But and it's and it's fine to take days like that. Like mm-hmm. that is that is a thing that, that that is recognizably good for you. But I mean, the issue is when it when it, when it, not even when it becomes a routine. I don't think I'm in a position to to prescribe to people a routine of what they ought to do or to or say that they ought not to do that but i think the issue it becomes an issue when you feel like it's an issue Mm -hmm. when 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 you're doing it because you 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 know that you don't feel like you're doing anything else or when you hide in it and that like i i do that i Mm -hmm. will you know i'll take a day and i'll just be like oh i i need this day but at the same time like i am i am hiding in this day from all the stuff that i have to do and Mm -hmm. i just have to do it tomorrow and doing it tomorrow makes it even worse because Mm -hmm. i do so burdened with the knowledge that I could have already had it done the day before. It becomes a problem for future Jim and future Ryan yeah. to take care of. And when... that's not how you dump problems on future on, on future nope. selves. Nope. It's not kind to your future yous who have their own problems to deal with. Yeah. Like the fact that you were up all night. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so suddenly now you have to be bright and chipper for a podcast. And... Yeah. <laughs> but no, it also, it, it, it's, if you take care of yourself, I mean, it helps you get a job i mean not just in the sense that it, that it helps you hunt more efficiently but when you meet new people who might be in a position to help you out on that front or when you go to interviews or whatnot you are not the person who just spent the week in their pajamas is like oh man right right i need to find out where my socks are mm-hmm. you know you you are a reasonably put together human being people see you doing things they're like this is a person who does things they might be between jobs but that what but they're still the person who does things you're vi- you can control things like your visibility. Uh, you can control things like the impression that you 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 give people, and the fact that you can be out giving those impressions to people. Mm-hmm. Um, again, it's not a thing I do every day, but it is a thing that is often on my mind, uh, especially given how. And this is the first and last time I want to mention it on the podcast, but it bears mentioning how. How important networking is in the current job market. Mm. Um, I, I actually wouldn't object to doing a podcast about networking, but it's not this podcast. No. If you would like to see a podcast about networking or listen to it, leave a comment and we'll see about putting one together. I got a lot of stuff on that, but mm-hmm. um, it is a thing that is burdened with jargon. Yeah. It's kind of funny when you mention self-care and the idea of putting yourself out there and interacting with other people because based on the episodes that we've done so far like we're starting our uh, ideas of what you and i are as like the hosts of the show are starting to really come across and for you interacting with other people when you're unemployed is such a typical gym thing because my response is as well uh the, some of the reasons why to keep busy is because it keeps you as an individual sharp So Mm -hmm. when you're out doing things, learning new skills, it keeps your mind active. Uh, The person, now I don't have the discipline that I wish I had where I get up and shave every day kind of deal. Like if you have a routine and you stick to it um, and everything is ordered, you never, you can react to surprises a lot easier. So suddenly, oh, can you come in for an interview this afternoon? You're not looking for your socks because you disciplined yourself like your room is clean or you're always ready to go. Um, But spending that time when you're not at a job, using that free time in a wise way that allows you to develop yourself as an individual is a very much a, a me, like virtue kind of response. Yeah. So it's, it's kind of funny how you bring up the idea that, you know, getting out and making yourself visible and interacting with other human beings is so important to you. And for me, it's important to constantly strive for excellence. I think I think both those are important. The, the reason why I stress interacting with human beings is partly because... Um, 
when I, when I'm faced with a lot of anxiety, I have a tendency to isolate myself from other people. Right. And so my my discipline thing is to make sure that I am leaving my house and 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 spending time with 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 friends, with people who care about me, meeting new people. Because a, I know that that is a thing that makes me happy, mm-hmm. and it is and it is a thing that even even if it is occasionally a source of anxiety or if it is burdensome, I will experience more anxiety by not doing it. There's a sense in which you can feel like you have lost control. Mm. And whether it's losing control of your income, whether it's losing control of your security, whether it's like there's a lot of things that you can but it seems and, and, and I think that sort of dovetails into in, in with things like depression is the is that the sense of, of not being in control of yourself, not being in control of your feelings and so the, the the goal I think for both of us is to is to find ways to be in control of of ourselves of our space uh, of our options in a way that, that that makes it feel less desperate even when it's not desperate mm-hmm. um, you know it, it, it there's this there's this sense that kicks in that, that just says oh man oh oh my god what's next it's, it's it's actually i guess it's not so much desperation it's dealing with uncertainty yeah well, it's and, kind of like the first when you first start your, your masters or whatever you, when i was writing the complete thesis and you're writing your individual papers of you have a start point you have an idea of where the end point is and you have no idea how it's supposed to yeah. how it's supposed to work out in the middle same with a job like you're in a position now where you may or may not have a resume you may or may not have um, interview practice mm-hmm. under your belt and then the end goal is a job you have no idea how to navigate from here to there whether it's finding a job through a friend whether it's going out there and putting yourself out on the job market um, blasting a million and one job posts and hoping like a buckshot that something sticks mm-hmm. so it's there's so many ways to go about it it almost paralyzes you, you have no idea where to start or know, know where, you don't know where to invest your time to move yourself forward yeah. without wasting your time on not doing other things. Mm-hmm. I mean, it is ultimately opportunity cost. Yeah. Whatever you decide to focus on now is going to take time away from the other things that you're going to do. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, so I have a bunch of rules. Mm. And these are things that uh, I made them before grad school. And I, I, I tried my best to force them in grad school, even when grad school was my job. Um, and then when I got out. And it is, they've changed a bunch, but essentially I have to work out twice a day, Mm -hmm. which is once more or occasionally twice more than I would. Um, But it's, it's a thing that doesn't take a lot of time, but it makes me feel really good and it it makes me feel like I'm taking care of myself and I am taking care of myself a little better. Mm -hmm. I mean, eating right is, is, isn't, isn't an unemployment goal. It's just a thing that I attempt to do. Um, and so the notion that I am, I'm at least not going to physically deteriorate and become a, a lump laying on the couch like jab of the hut makes me feel good. <laughs> uh, I have to write a thing. Writing is something that matters to me, is something that I love doing, is something that I never, I can never do enough of. So every day I have to write a thing. 500,000 words, just blog post, a piece of a story, an entire story, a song, something. I have to write something i have to learn something uh lately it's been new guitar stuff uh sometimes it's a uh, new program programming language sometimes it's how to do stuff in after effects or in photoshop you know it's just sort of whatever whatever floats my boat but as long as i learn something new i can look back and i can go hey well at least i learned something that day mm-hmm. uh, and the big one is i have to leave my house Every day I have to leave my house and go somewhere, even if it's just for a walk. Uh, which means, because that means that I have to have a shower. I have to get dressed. I have to go outside and possibly see sunlight and breathe air that isn't recycled through my building. I have to, wand, you know, like wander around and see other humans, at least on the street. Uh, every other day I have to interact with friends. Internet friends do not count. I have lots of internet friends and I hang out with them a lot, but I have to be in the physical presence of people who are capable of silently judging me. Um, so that I can well then, then that's exactly it. I mean I mean I mean for me sometimes it's it's 
it's the persistent feeling of having been uh, of, of, of sort of being found wanting mm-hmm. and but but the notion that I that I push myself to do it means that when I when I get out there I'm I'm okay with that mm-hmm. I, and then obviously my friends are not always silently judging me except for the ones that are you know who you are <laughs> But yeah, it's a whole, it's a whole process. It's not, you know, it doesn't regiment my whole day or anything like that. It still leaves me plenty of time to apply for jobs and develop my resume and things like that. But it also leaves me plenty of time to just mess around and do stuff. I want to write more music and make more videos. And mm-hmm. I'm doing some videography for a balloon artist. Oh, cool. Yeah. Hmm. We'll see more about that in, in over the next month or so, but it's going to be fun. Yeah. So it's really interesting you talk about these rules. So I've set up similar rules for myself before Um, when I was in grad school and I had to move home um, where my parents are for a little while. I did have... Home is where your parents are. Well, I consider this now home (laughs) for me. But um, when I moved home to my parents' place, I had four or five goals that I wanted to try to do every day. I I, I tried the Seinfeld method of don't Mm -hmm. break the chain. Um, and it worked to a little bit of success, but largely a lot of the goals went un, unfinished. Things just like, you know, play guitar every day, work on a new language every day. Not a different, but work, work on learning a language every <laughs> How many day. languages do you speak? Well, not, I only yeah. just the one, really. But I can say, yes, I am a very cunning linguist in 17 languages. Yeah, uh, well, there was a few other... Um, but that'd be a big hit at the bar. Reading and exercising were the other two. Um, and, and so, but they were really vague and they weren't well defined. It's really hard to, again, like if you don't have something that's concrete that you're working on, like for you, leaving the house is concrete enough that it gets you to do something, but it's not so uh, fixed that you don't have a little bit of wiggle room in terms yeah. of what you do with it, right? So similar to you, uh, instead of coming up though with rules, I came up with goals for myself. And so far, I've only come up with four. I might add more. Uh, and I might refine them a little bit. Uh, but so far, the four goals that I have during this unemployment phase, um, I want to get back into geocaching, which if you don't know what it is, go ahead and Google it. Otherwise, just ignore just ignore what geocaching is and you've never heard anything about it muggles. Um, <laughs> but geocaching forces me to do two things. It forces me to go outside and it also allows me an excuse or it gives me um, something to do with my dog other than taking him for a walk. So instead of saying I want to take my dog for one or two, sorry, take my dog for one or two walks a day, it's I'm going to take him along with me when I go geocaching. Because when I looked up the caches, all of, or sorry, not all of them, but um, 15 to 20 of them just in the first page of the search are all within two kilometers of my house. But it gets me out of the house doing something different, it gives me a goal instead of just walking around the block. It's giving me a destination to head towards and it not only gives me some exercise but it gives my dog some exercise Uh, so that's the first one the second one is to write a journal entry every day because i'm pretty big on reflection and i think we'll do a a podcast about that kind of reflection like journaling or or any kind of blogging blogging yeah so i want to write a journal entry each day Uh, the third one is is i want to read a chapter of something every day uh, rather than like finish a book, it's just read a chapter. So some chapters, like right now I'm working through, or one of the things I'm working through is book one of the Winston Churchill biography. Um, those chapters are 100 pages long because they're not really chapters. They're more like parts of the book. Uh, so that, that'll be a little bit more difficult. Uh, but also I don't want to cheat and do things like uh, I'm also currently reading through The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. And some of those chapters are four pages long right so i have to some yeah. i might have to modify it a little bit but i don't want to say just read 20 pages i just want to read at least one chapter of mm-hmm. something per day um and that's just a minimum that's not i read the chapter and then i'm done for the day it's if i happen to read more or if i happen to go for more geocaches or if i write multiple journals a day that's that's fine yeah. but i have to do at least one and then the fourth thing that the fourth goal that i set up and this is a little bit less defined i'm not sure if i want to expand this but pursue one job prospect per day now i don't know i i I think i would be cheating myself if i just find one job posting per day i think i want to try to maybe daily might be difficult but apply to one job per day might that might be stretching it a bit because i might run out of jobs that i'm qualified for (laughs) really quickly um but there are it, it as long as i'm making some sort of action towards a job so whether or not i'm taking a coffee meeting um i'm 
inquiring about positions. Uh, I con- I'm going to contact um, U Waterloo and tap into their alumni resources for people who are searching for jobs. So it's I haven't quite firmed up what exactly will will uh, achieve this goal per day, but I th- at the right now I'm just leaving it as one job prospect per day, um, and then I don't know maybe by the next or in a couple podcasts or whatever, I can clarify that up just as a, a follow-up. But yeah. So those are the, the four goals I'm, I'm looking to achieve to just get myself out of the house, get myself moving, and get myself being productive in some way because the journaling and the job hunt is very much a, um, I'm making something, um, even if it's just for the, the sake of getting an interview or getting mm-hmm. a job. But it's still it's forcing me to put something up here, out there, um, that's uh, Ryan's head for those of you listening. <laughs> my putting stuff out of or taking stuff out of my head and putting them into the real world. And like I said, I might add other things like d- doing more creative things with you because now that we have more free time, we can do boss casts. I can help you with vlogs um, or we can take on some sort of more artistic project and make. I got a few ideas. Yeah. So, I mean, we've got time on our hands and i've got skills that i want to learn so well i think that the 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 key too is is to and this is this i think is the real is is the challenge of um sort of making stuff while while between jobs or going through a career change because at one at one on one hand i always want to make more stuff Mm -hmm. but there's a point where you need to recognize the distinction between productivity and procrastination yeah like if making things become yeah if making things becomes the escape, um, then it's time or, or, or the way to hide then it's time to step back. Mm-hmm. I mean, and that is something that I'm sort of continually aware of is is uh, until until making stuff becomes my career, <laughs> um, I need to to sort of split my focus on those things. Yeah, no. uh, I guess our last time. It, part of this is, is the relevance of other people. I mean, we've mm-hmm. talked about it a bit is, is, is um, maintaining uh, like going out and seeing friends or, or, or getting out of the house or spending time with your dog. I mean, your dog is, is for the purposes of this counts as another person, I think. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it can be a time that's really stressful and thus it's a time where it, I think it's really important to sort of lean on your, your support network. Mm. And to to not not just in the sense that you have a group of friends and people who are capable of doing things for you, um, although I, I I find myself at the center of this this group of people who do and that's amazing, but in the sense that you can use the time you have to give back to them and to the people around you in a way that is still meaningful, um, because because. Part of the stress, I think, comes from the notion that you, you find yourself leaning on people mm-hmm. in ways that you you otherwise wouldn't if you were in different circumstances, whether it's because of stress or whether it's financial need or uh, whatever. But it, it's the kind of thing that I think it comes with a lot of strong feelings. And so one of the things I, I spend a bunch of time thinking about is now that I have a bit more time, what opportunities do I have to to help people out the, the, my unwritten fifth rule is find a way to help somebody out every day it's not a it's it's not a real goal i don't think it's a real thing but you know it's one of those things where i every once in a while i think about oh i could i could you know help somebody out and shoot a blog but i don't want to be the guy who, sh- who helps somebody out so i can shoot a blog mm. i just want to be the guy who helps people out mm. and the result is that sometimes people help me out and I really appreciate it. Mm. You know, whether it's lunch or whether it's just, you know, t- uh, talking with me. It was it was really great. On my, on my on the last day of my contract, I got three or four text messages and 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 calls from friends of mine who were like, "Yeah, you know, I got some stuff lined up and it's going to be pretty cool." I'm like, "Wow, this is actually going to work out." Um, and it's and it's I mean, those kinds of relationships are the most valuable thing you can have. I think if I if I didn't exercise and I didn't and I didn't um, eat right and I didn't you know, accomplish all my other goals if I managed to help out the people who are best in my life then I have had a pretty good day mm-hmm. and and that is a thing that, that carries on where I think not just in terms of karma because I don't believe in karma but 
in terms of of a to be crass improving improving employability. Mm-hmm. It makes you a happier person, and the, it makes the people around you happier as a result. And again, when you show up at a job interview, they wind up interviewing with this person who's a really put together functioning human being, mm-hmm. which some days is a real struggle. When I'm thinking about it. Like there's, uh, I see two ways of viewing it. One is, for me personally, satisfying that creative urge. But ultimately, Mm -hmm. just forcing yourself to get out and and getting help from others and pushing yourself forward reminds me of, um, you know, no man or no person is an island, right? Like no, no one single person is a complete master of where they are. They, They require... Um, the assistance from other people to get yeah. them where they are and when you have that extra time it's sometimes good to go back and weed the garden a little bit and really cultivate those those friendships and remind yourself why why these people are in your life and spend more time with them but then also be can't do that solely like you do have to focus on the job yeah. the job work of it which from a purely selfish point of view if you are Maybe not creating things when you're not employed, but if you are constantly working on stuff, that reflects better on you as an employee. And selfishly speaking, like that helps you. Like it just helps you when you keep yourself going, doing things because you're not idly sitting by. And like, sure, sure, you have to j- apply to a job in order to get it. But if that's the only thing you're doing, that's fine. But if you can say to an employer, oh yeah, you know, I've been without a job for one two three or four months but in that time i was doing this or you know i started a side like cured cancer i started a side hustle i volunteered more i helped with this project or whatever it just shows shows a potential employer that you know you are an employee who will be conscious of their time and constantly be working on things and it reflects better on you so i mean if nothing else doing these things on the side when you're when you're unemployed or underemployed it will help you from a kind of utilitarian but for me personally it satisfies a much deeper running thing of you know i i'm tired of sitting around and watching netflix all the time there's a time and a place to watch netflix or there's a time and a place to play minecraft there's Um, all times in all places touche especially because (laughs) because the things you do in minecraft are indicative of the time invested into it i mean ultimately (laughs) instead of instead of finding ways to be a better employee start your own business yeah and work for yourself we don't know anything about that actually but uh, maybe we'll get some people who do it could be a future podcast yeah anyway that is uh that's us i think i'm gonna go play minecraft I think it sounds like a good place to cut it off. And I've probably got some more things in Netflix to watch. <laughs> so leave you, I, what I would love to hear in the comments is um, what you do when you are between jobs. Ultimately, your best tip. Um, and we'll collate those into, in, in, if we get a bunch of them, we'll collate those into uh, something that will be hopefully be useful for lots of people. Mm-hmm. And maybe you'll inspire us in the future for things that we can do when we're uh, unemployed because i mean like i said your rules inspired me to codify my goals so i mean it always helps to constantly be looking at what other people do to drive themselves and then deriving some inspiration from that so mutual mentorship mutual benefit mutual benefit society yeah (laughs) anyway we will see you guys in two weeks i'm jim i'm ryan we're signing off stay awesome any second now any second now now